Folks, it is a chilly early spring morning. We got rain coming in a little bit later today. Wind's picking up. Um, and I'm using an informal access point. I won't even show you. My kayak's already down there. Most of my stuff's there. Um, got my rods lined up here. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to decide on which lure which presen presentation to use in in different instances. I know, you know, if, if you're, if you ask people enough, eventually you hear somebody say, you gotta let the fish tell you what they wanna eat. How do you do that? How's that done? You stick your head down the water and go, hey fish, what do you eat? No, I, it, it's sort of a hollow thing for somebody to tell Someone that really just wants some concrete answers and direction on how to choose the right bait for the conditions um, at hand. So we'll go through a couple here, uh, but first and foremost, anytime you're at a creative access point, you want to pick up trash so as to give kayak anglers a good name. Here's an example of someone that gave kayak fishing a bad name. They just ripped this off, brand new kayak and uh, left it there down by the launch. So be the good guy, pick up, you know, spend five minutes picking up trash. I've done that. I'm gonna go ahead and take that with me. And I will note that the river is up today and it's gonna be fast. So I'm not doing this trip without three horsepower of electric outboard power 105 pound thrust the torquedo ultralight 1103 i'm just not doing it i'm not like today isn't happening at this river level now i'm putting it in a creek i could stay there all day it's not what i'm gonna do anyways let's jump right in the the ways that you're changing how you're changing the profile you're changing here are two baits with similar flash so nice bait fish profile here also one here this one has more thump and vibration from the blades and from that boot tail this is a more subtle presentation also similarly sized um, profile but quieter more subtle um, if I'm in more current I think this one gets the nod to get their you know, this, this war baits spinner bait with a diesel minnow. Um, overall, big profile, lots of flash. So you're cranking it up if you're in more current. Throw that in white water, throw this in less current. So that's an adjustment. More current, less current. So let's move over, just comparing these two. Um, this one, this one's gonna be good in clean water. This one, because it's a transition to darker colors in muddier water. So there's a transition. Um, this is not a not a bit fish profile at all. I got to get this off of there. But it's a it's a craw profile with a lot of vibration. It's a jackhammer with the bat wings. Okay, so cranked up, really aggressive, thump thump thump. They hear that coming. Whereas something like this, smaller profile, silent, and uh, or more subtle. You know, if you're not getting a lot of bites, but you think you know where they are, that's a good option. The difference between this one and this one is a change in profile. <clears throat> it's also darker, so muddier water, cleaner water, right? So the last three that I covered, you know, the, the jackhammer there with the, the bat wings. 
the black punch rig that's, that's the big bat wings and then the green punch rig with the, uh, the smaller bat wings. Let's change to one that's noisier, another craw profile. So this is dialing up the, uh, the amount of movement. A little bit of movement, a lot more movement. <clears throat> So this is actually similar to the jackhammer down there in that it's it's gonna be noisy banging off the rocks, but it's you know it's it's a crop profile with a lot of movement. And we're gonna go all the way down to the most dialed down presentation I got ready, and that is the uh, the TRD cross. It's gonna be dead stick. It's gonna be very little movement, very small profile, good for clean, clear water. I'll probably throw that in the creek. Once I get on the main river, I don't know if this one gets much action because it's going to be muddier and higher velocity. So, you know, <clears throat> you're, you're basically looking at the progression of aggression. You're changing how big the profile is, how fast it's moving, how much flash it has, how much vibration it has, uh, in, in speed. The amount of noise it makes all of those are on a continuum and do you hear the birds when they're noisy i hear grackles i hear sparrows sometimes you hear the the you know you, you see bunnies moving you see other animals along the shoreline you see the squirrels chasing each other around the tree when nature is active and noisy you want to lean more towards the more aggressive presentation more flash bigger profile uh, greater speed more vibration noise when things get quiet your bait should also get quieter smaller slower so it has to do with salooner times and in times that i don't totally get it but i believe it they're just times where they eat when they're aggressive and you're wasting your time if you're fishing slow and quiet and finesse during those times. If if uh, it's noisy, like with this this incoming front, I'm going to start power fishing. I'm actually going to start in the creek with the crankbait, the jackhammer. We'll see. Might throw in a jerk bait. That's a transition bait. You can fish it still, and you can get ones that are silent, as opposed to rattling, uh, or you can fish it fast. That's a great bait for figuring out how dialed up they want it. Anyhow, we're going to go over some of these, and I'm going to let you into my thought process as I go. But think of it in terms of, are you dialing up or dialing back? Speed, profile, how dark it is, how much flash it has, how noisy it is, all of that. All right, let's go fishing. All right, I got two rods up front. I always start with one fast and one slow, but I got all those other rods back here. A little bit different look than what I usually do. I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, six across. So I can turn around and grab and, and quick, quickly switch from one to the next, 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 based on what I'm observing. Now, talked about the conditions. Is it muddy? Is it swift current? Is it, you know, all the different things. The one thing I didn't talk about was the fish activity. And really that's what it means when people say, you gotta let the fish tell you what they want. And if you're getting bit a lot on finesse, maybe you don't stick with finesse. I know that sounds counterintuitive. See if you can get by with power fishing, speeding it up. Because if they're aggressively hitting finesse, especially if it they hit it before it hits the bottom, they probably want to chase. They're probably on it. They're probably looking to eat. That's when you need to dial it up with your speed. All right, let's jump in. Fish some fast, some slow. See what we get going. So water temperature is another factor that helps you decide how fast or slow you're going to fish. Um, I know that I consider this crankbait fishing fast, but I'm actually retrieving it rather slowly. 
for a crankbait. So, is it the water in this? I mean, it got cold here overnight. It's still kind of cold. Um, but as it warms up later in the day, you would transition to just faster retrieves. They're, you know, if, if they're telling you that they want it. Again, back to the talking fish. It does happen, I swear. Just gotta listen. All right, so already I'm probably three dozen casts in with the crankbait. I'm just not not feeling it. It's time to uh, make that first dialing down, really. I mean, if they jumped right on it right away, you know, hey, it's working. Don't change it. But I don't know. What was it three dozen casts in? Clear water. I'm gonna change. What am I changing to? Still a moving bait. Not a jerk bait, it's a pause bait. So overall this provides that opportunity to have a fast moving bait that gives the fish a second to catch up. And and this ghost minnow in this clear water in the creek, it's a good option. So it's a lucky craft slender pointer 112 MR. So I will get a little bit of smelly jelly and slather it up so that when they get they get in close. So yeah, it looks like food. Ooh, it smells like it too. I think I'll eat it. Um, also lubricates the bait a little bit so that when they chomp on it, it slides in the jaw. So, all right. Adjustment one. See how it goes. So you only dial it down or slow down if you absolutely have to. Um, if I can fish this, jerk, jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause, jerk, jerk, pause, and, and get bit, I'm covering water faster, which is great, but only if I'm getting bit doing that. So, you know, the jerk bait itself is a good study in, in dialing up or dialing down part of your presentation. Uh, in this case, it's, it's your speed. I will start fast and progressively slow down and it could be that I get to the point where I put it out there and I rip it and forget about it and they eat it which is basically finesse fishing as I would with a sense of jerk shad you know just only in the middle of the water column so that's dialed all the way down not really what I want to do um, I want to cover more water, if I can, if I get bit. See that woodpecker? I know you probably hear that truck on the other side of the road, but... There's the woodpecker. Hmm. Maybe he's telling me, Hey Jeff, it's time for the jackhammer. I don't know, still seems a bit aggressive. Uh, I'm not getting bit yet on the jerk bait. I'm gonna go a little bit longer, slow it down some. But I think back to this time of year, maybe it was a little bit later, I think back to a day when Jed and I fished somewhere north of um, Ferry Boat Campground with throwing jerk baits and just whacked them every single grass bed there was a big fish you know at least 17 and a half behind every single one of them got a lot of upper 19 inch fish i think we got 320s collectively that day and you have memories you fish history and think oh man yeah i want it to be jerk baits today in the worst way well that's a pitfall that is something that you just say, God, it's spring. 
Spring's always been so good for me with jerk baits. I'm gonna stick with jerk baits like a long time. I'm about to put my jerk bait away. I really am. Um, even though the birds are active, that woodpecker's going and I can hear the grackles over here. Uh, even the rooster in the distance is saying, I'm feeling it. I feel good. Yeah, well, I don't know. I think I gotta slow down. So, putting the jerk bait away. Let's turn around here. See what else we can find. Because it's so clear in here. Dial all the way down. Oop. I don't want to, but I just, I gotta shake. Not catching a fish in the first 15 minutes, I gotta get rid of that. And I'm gonna put this TRD Bugs. This is the most dialed down bait I've got. Um, fishing on that Fenwick Elite Bass. It's a good rod, man. Good price point rod. But yeah, in clear water, sometimes you have to dial all the way down. They see that jerk bait coming from a long way off. And it's too obvious. It's too much. All right, so far today, I've only really discussed that I've dialed up or dialed down the presentation. And in this case, I'm moving it where there's more current with this finesse bait, and it was just sitting there. Um, the dialing up sometimes isn't the bait, but the amount of current that you're, you're putting yourself profile and how much I moved it that's a finesse presentation dialed everything down I didn't catch them on a crankbait a jerk bait or even that sent a jerk shad up there but I did catch this first really nice one by dialing up how much current I was in I went through that entire pool where it was slow and I moved to where there's there's more current rolling through here a beautiful fish let me get a measurement on him A three and three quarter, so like 312 on the boga grip. I've already wet my board, and uh, yeah, let's see, the 18 and three quarter. Great start to the day. We'll go ahead and get this guy back in. Another one in more dialed up. Current, I'll say. Oh, you get in here. You're a little chunk. Now, I'm fairly certain I could keep going here with this bait, but why is it that I don't want to? Why would I not just keep doing it? I'm good at this. I, this is what I'm best at. The downside of saying, oh, I'm really good at finesse and I'll do that all day and catch a bunch of fish, is that you miss out on those days. Oh, get further into that eddy. You miss out on those days and those hours where they're just, that another one? Where they're just whacking the, uh, the moving baits, the bigger baits, the dialed up baits, the flashy ones, the ones that you can cover a lot of uh, water quickly. Here, I think I'm covering the right water, which is good, but I can't cover it quickly with this presentation. This presentation gets bit in this clear water when it's just sitting there, and I have to invest so much time into each cast. It's worth it, but you fall into the trap where that's all you want to do, and you miss out on just terrific jackhammer, spinnerbait, crankbait days where it's just you catch more than you can with finesse. So we're gonna 
make our way to the main river so that we can continue this lesson on dialing up. We're gonna change the conditions so I can show you different stuff, different ways to dial up or dial down. So my starting point for fishing the river is gonna be this jackhammer with the bat wings. Um, I'm just pulling him forward. I probably will hit a couple of the, uh, the bridge pilings in this creek on the way out. I'm going to put away the big scented jerk shad. Um, yeah, I, I'll look for excuses to come back to that. But what I'm going to do in anticipation of what I think will be muddier water, not totally muddy water, but like fast muddy water. I'm gonna put away, I'm gonna dial down the color of the jerk bait from the, uh, the ghost minnow, which is great for clear water in here. I'm gonna put something else on. And my muddiest, my favorite muddy water jerk bait is the Aurora Green Perch, but there's other good options. Anything that has a good, good contrast is uh, it's a good option, but I am going to go ahead and put that one on because I'm expecting that uh, they could chew on that. Out in the main, main part of the river, higher flow, someone really likes texting me multiple times. Yep. Just text once. Let it be a long one. So it's not like muddy brown, but the clarity, as one just jumped right there, the clarity we had in the creek, which is right there, has definitely gone away. And uh, you just got some murkiness to it, which I think calls for, you know, a more noisy, obnoxious, colored bait, or sounding bait. Color, I think, is, is still appropriate. It's, you know, green pumpkin. Yeah, if it was totally muddy, I would, I think I would go with the, um, the black and blue flake. I still may switch to that. We'll see how this green one does. But it is dialing up um, how easy they find it. You know, it's the jackhammer sound wise is just crazy noisy. So I'm gonna fish this a while, moving up this bank. Move it a little bit, let it fall down, start it up again. They're uh, they're looking to eat. Can't imagine they wouldn't eat this. Uh, just had a bump there. It wasn't until until I let it sit on bottom a second. You definitely don't want to lose sight of the fact that the jackhammer's a bladed jig. You know, the noisy nature of it and swimming certainly clues them into their, their presence. But you want to see it on bottom sometimes. So I've dialed up the, the noise factor in more turbid water, more muddy water. But I'm not, I'm not burning it. Calm water. There's moving water right next to it, but you hit the calm water. Let's see if you hit that again. There should be one in there. I think it probably is. But he's not eating the craw looking jackhammer. I think this is a little bit of the case of my not listening to the fish. They're telling me. Back there a little while ago. I got one to hit this, but it was it hit it when it was on the bottom. It hit it when I rested. I don't want to chase the craw today. I want to sit on the bottom. So I'm gonna do the punch rig. 
can see what that does. First one on the punch rig. And this kind of foamy eddy. He was right up in that slop too. Like close to the bank. I don't usually have him get off on this rig. He actually bent that hook out. Uh, I gotta switch hooks. Oh, I've gone with too light a hook when I horsed him. Huh. That's a learning moment. I like the fine wire hook, but not if it's gonna do that. I didn't lose him, the hook lost him. Time to change things up. Um, you know, this is really just part of experimenting with, with different hooks. Uh, look at that. Bummer. All right. I'm learning. By the way, you hear the birds going crazy? I should probably speed up. You know, the, the speed of retrieval is is a function of, sure, the salooner times, but also the water temperature. So I don't know. How does it all balance out? You know, I did get I did get to fish that fairly quickly. You know, I wasn't wasn't in any one spot very long. I wasn't I wasn't dead sticking it. I mean, it was in there for eh, I'm gonna tell you in one spot, moving, dragging, popping, some pauses, not more than 15 seconds per presentation. All right, I got that stouter hook. Let's see what that does. I am gonna add some more scent. But yeah, I mean, there's there's finesse fishing where you <laughs> you dead stick or you let it sit there a while, and then there's I bet you there's a bunch of fish in this eddy, you know. And then there's power fishing with a finesse style bait. Felt like one for a second. I don't know that it was. I also don't know that it wasn't. Oh, look at that poor guy. Look at all those marks on him. Someone's been chewing on this fish. Who's been chewing on you? God, he's like bleeding and stuff. Sorry, dude. All right, well, center the eddy with the punch rig. Really had to slow it down. Yeah. Uh, I'm good at it. I know how to do that. I just, I always want a quicker presentation. Um, I shouldn't push, put this away, because it's, it's gonna work. But I just want to optimize some power fishing presentations. It's funny, I usually, I usually force finesse. Today I'm trying to force power fishing. It's really, I mean, it's because of this video, right? I want to drive home the point. If you can get a power fishing presentation going, the right one that matches the conditions, the amount of current, um, the water temperature and, and temperature trend, all of those, you know, conditions by dialing it in, um, you should, you should. Power fishing just, 
catches more fish if it's gonna work. So I'm gonna go back to the jerk bait. I know I can catch them with those slow or even stopped craw presentations on the bottom. I know they work. <laughs> I'd like a jerk bait to work. I'm gonna try it, but I'm not gonna live and die by it either. Okay, loosen up that drag. Power fishing jerk bait pattern. All right, he was in that eddy. All right, we're at this. We got a mountain right there, and this major ledge system across, which is giving us a bunch of foam pockets. There's actually that's the obvious one up there. There's one back here. All right, I worked that. Ledge Eddy, time to hit these shoreline ones before I punch up through there. It's time to use all 1100 watts to punch up through this rapid. See what's around the bend there. Here we go. stability in what's really turbulent water, but that phone looks good there. Should have a fish or two. They look so surprised when their mouth gets they look like <gasps> they're in shock. <gasps> I can't believe I was caught. <gasps> See ya. Two out of that one. Um, it seems like letting the jerk bait linger under the stillest foam is kind of the key. I'm gonna keep moving, find more big pockets of still foam, and keep putting my jerk bait on there. But you know, it's it's all these little adjustments that lead you to, hey, I've tried this, I've tried that. I mean, I could still be back up in the creek, and I I've caught my biggest one there so far, uh, but I could be fishing, you know, fishing slow and thorough and really just dead sticking absolutely there. I know there's a bunch of fish in there, but I wanted to teach the process of dialing in today. So we moved on from that and found different water to make some adjustments. And, uh, you know, so far, the adjustment towards the long pause of the jerk bait, and just, you know, fairly still foam. This is actually too much current, um, but it's working. And we're gonna keep going up here, see if we can find some more of that.
rain is starting. And uh, I gotta take this camera down. Get my rain hat out, my big, big yellow coca tat hat. So I got something that's working, but I always kind of think, is there something that could work better? And same, same sound, same suspension, but I think, you know, with this overcast sky, I think that white might, uh, it's actually called Chartreuse Shad, might do a little bit better than the Aurora Green Perch. I'm going to give it a shot. Um, this sort of comes down to really fine tuning the dialing in that you've already done to say, I'm going to stick with the jerk bait, but I'm going to try different colors and keep a similar, you know, similar presentation. Get it, you know, get it to the bank foam, get it into those eddies and uh, let it linger. It's just going to be a little bit different color. Maybe they're going to bite that a little bit better. Just dialing it in a little further. And if it doesn't work, I'll go back to the Aurora Green Perch. And I'm going to take one more cast in this uh, mid-river ledge eddy. Not a whole lot of still foam there, but it was worth a shot out here in the middle. Most of what I'm seeing is on the bank. Uh, just because there's such a high velocity of current. So much water coming down. Um, not a whole lot to slow it down. But I'm going to head on the other side of the river here. There's a uh, another creek. I did pretty good in that creek pretty quick. On this side, I'm going to go check out the other one on this side. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see if we get a more, more reliable bite. Seventeen and a half. Nice looking fish. All right, let's go find some more spots like that. Very big one. Very, very big. On the white. Jerk bait. Dialing it in. It keeps getting better. Oh, that's big for the day. Ooh, very cool. All right. This one goes 19 inches. I get a weight here in a second. And then I'm going to do a little release video for uh, Instagram but on the larger white it's really chartreuse shad flash pointer MR so getting it dialed in nicely Another 
strong one. For sure. Stands to reason they're willing to hit this hard jerk bait that's white. Maybe it's time to put the big scented jerk shad in there. Give them something soft to chew on. But two of them over 19 from the same spot. Very similar profile. I'm gonna put some scent on this one. Send it back into the same spot. I tell you, there is one thing I can do with this soft jerk bait that I can't do with a hard one, and that's skipping it way up in there. Yep, they like it. big chunky fish this time on the soft plastic white jerk bait the seven inch scented jerk shad um, you know they're they're loaded up right there at that creek mouth i'm running this one up into the creek a little bit um, just to get him away from his buddy you know if you release them right back into the pack they look freaked out and then uh, the bite kind of ends so, you know, a bunch of good ones in there. 17 and a quarter. Numbers are adding up. Let's see a fish. Let's go get more. With the jerk shad, it's important to hang it. Let's see which way it's spinning. Um, you will get some line twist on these, and the best way to combat it, I'm just twisting that line further in the direction that I rigged it wants to twist. It just sort of counters whatever line twist you've developed. Um, the best way to combat the line twist is to rig it on there straight. But it's uh, it's going to happen. You see, you got to monitor it and unspin it. There it goes. Oh, man. Tapped it. Didn't eat it. Yep. So they're messing with it. I think the hard jerk bait would have caught them, caught those last two. They gotta decide to eat this whole thing. Whereas the jerk bait, they can mess with it. And there we go. Another. Which 
missed a couple fish there with the straight flow. So I'm gonna do something I haven't done yet with the scented jerk shad. I'm gonna I'm gonna set it up on braid to fluoro. Um, might have a better, more immediate hook set. I don't know. It could be those fish only had the tail. I'm not really sure, but. Time to experiment a little bit. This spot is more important than any presentation. I feel like the white, um, big white bait fish is a great presentation. Great, great thing to put in there, but they've seen it a lot. And now I wanna go in with the bat wings, with the punch rig. Give them, give them something different to look at. Maybe they've had that bait in their mouth and I've not poked them. Time to give them a crayfish. Get some variety in their diet. Yeah. Get some of this, man. It's good. Decent distance upstream. Let's get a release on this guy. So it's just a classic springtime eat spot and it's just, you know, the creek mouths right at the front scene, they just load up. Maybe I was wrong about all the big ones coming first. On your way to be big. Eh, maybe you are big. for telling you you were small another 18 incher we poke around in this creek a little so with the creek mouths you know getting up in these creeks in in springtime your two best hot spots, the mouth of it, and if you go all the way up to where it starts um, having current, which is actually the first fish we caught today, uh, was in that, that other creek. Uh, as far up as you could go, well, he wasn't all the way, but he was, he was where the current picks up again. And that's kind of where I'm headed right now. I'm hoping to get somewhere where, you know, if I go too much further, I'm running aground. That's really what it 
boils down to. I'm pretty mad about that thing attached to his face. Uh, gonna stay button. Uh, this is a pretty good one. Good work, Pete. Stay down. Thank you. Thank you. You went right into that net. Just as you should have. Alright. Another good one. Another chunk of chunks. Look at him. Good ones. Seventeen and three quarters and but see you later, fitness. So at anything close to normal river levels, I'm probably I don't know, dragging up this creek maybe a quarter mile anyways to get to the spot so you know the river drops in level and this is I don't think normally a place that those river fish have access to I could be wrong I mean, they, they can move through some really skinny stuff but this is as far up as we're gonna get today all right it just doesn't quite have the uh, the depth I was hoping for so Go ahead and cut and run. I definitely want to save some time for uh, <clears throat> for the mouth, and then you know there's kind of a long run back down to the creek I started with. Um, fortunately, I went upstream instead of down, so that long run should go pretty quick. But I got. Eh, about two hours of daylight. I'd like to spend that in the highest percentage areas that I can find. Um, I am going to hit the one spot where I got the 17 and three quarter. There was an outside bend with some good, um, good depth there. You know, sometimes the jerk bait, if you move somewhat quickly through there, lets you um, lets you find the high percentage areas in the middle uh, part of the creek. I'm going to give it a shot and go back to the mouth, pound the mouth, then head back to the other creek. So this is where I hooked the one I snagged. I had to go over through the snag. I totally understand why that fish was there. A couple big boulders, three really big boulders right there log jam here, outside bend, depth, tire, I don't know, there's always a tire, oh there we go, oh he just got off, right below me, oh the jerk bait, uh, Always the case. You want to hurry up and cast right back in there, and you get some stupid thing like this. All right, this thing's gotten a workout. It's actually missing part of a hook there. We're uh, heading back to the creek mouth. We've let it sit for about 90 minutes. And see how uh, that might have gotten it to reload. Hoping so. When I know there's some fish in the spot, I do ease up on the, the Torquedo. I don't want the motor to push a big wave of water onto them, letting them know that I've arrived. So, actually lift that up to just make sure I don't accidentally bump it and spook those fish. Jig. I'm punch weight the other. Okay. 
direction I want it to be. So we'll just quietly slide. And turn. That sculling draw is so useful. You want to learn how to do it. Dig around in the kayak fishing skills playlist. Well, the draw stroke, that one specifically is the uh, sculling draw. Thought it'd be good to get one more close up look before I leave at this tremendous creek mouth eat spot. Um, you got a current seam out there. I got a lot of hits on that current seam. You got a dead area in the middle, some current billowing in this way, and a lot of foam just sitting in between. And, uh, you know, the bites were spread throughout, but I think it was mostly when I dragged it from that current seam into the pocket of foam. And you did have a blending of water clarity, the creek itself, super clear. Uh, the river itself, I don't want to call it muddy, it's still green. But it's like a murky, you know, murky green that probably has no more than three foot of visibility. And that, you know, that gradient from murky to clear, what a tremendous ambush point for these fish just to eat whatever is, is coming down, uh, coming down this river, wandering out into the somewhat clean creek water and just blast it. Back out in the main river and better loosen the drag on this guy. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Just right at the end of this this island and uh oh. and the white jerk does it again and again and again. Teenager. In fact, Loosened up quite a bit on this one, but oh, he's off. Oh, shoot. that was a uh, that was a very good fish. I saw him. Hmm. He could have been the biggest. He probably was. He moved. He probably moved some water. He hurt my feet. First stop. Ooh, never mind. Never mind. Ooh. Look at you spinning like that. That was just weird. You just stopped fighting me, but you're spinning. Oh, get in there. Good. Golly, it's a toad. Hello, toadly. Oh, 
I didn't think you were going to be there, but then you were. Alright, got him out of the net. Another nice one at 18 and a half, right in there. Did you try to come back in? You like me that much, huh? There's a creek mouth where I started the day. All right, it's been a great day out here. Caught a lot of really healthy, nice pre-spawn Susquehanna smallmouth. Most of them on that. Hopefully the, the process, or at least my thought process, on how you break down uh, the decisions to change from one presentation to the next. Uh, is giving you a little bit of thought in terms of you change profile, speed, how much flash. Um, you know, I did the color, the jerkbait color. I, I think that that's the fine tuning I did. Um, you know, there's there's just tweaking you got to do, but generally you're you're starting with am I fishing fast? Am I fishing slow? You need to try both. And uh, if you're only fishing slow, if you're only able to catch them fishing slow, you gotta work on that fast. And if you're only a power fisherman, well, you gotta learn how to downshift. If you, if you don't, you're gonna struggle on those days where the bite is tough. The bite was not tough today. I mean, it happened. And uh, I'm glad that I found a power fishing presentation that matched the conditions that, uh, you know, that I had. It's a good day. Thanks for watching.